testing, can you all hear me? Yes, are we good all the way in the back? Uh, my name is Alok Apadurai, and I'm co-founder of Fed by Threads with my partner, Jade Beal, and I'm here to talk about the greatest force shaping the world that we live in. But first, I should probably tell you a little bit about Fed by Threads. I never thought I'd be selling clothing. Not anywhere in my life, if you'd asked me 10 years ago, would I be a rag seller, a clothes seller? Uh, I would have I probably laughed in your face and said, <laughs> those are people that lead to overconsumption uh, and that are creating a lot of the problems that I see in the world. I will never sell clothing. And now I sell clothing. <laughs> so what happened? Uh, that happened. Uh, we got a letter from the Community Food Bank of Southern Arizona and it laid out issues about hunger in this country. And uh, I don't know if any of you have had that line in the sand moment where something comes into your consciousness and you just change your life. Anybody had that experience? A couple of people are nodding their heads. Uh, well, this was that moment for me. Um, 50 million Americans facing food insecurity, almost 16 to 17 million American kids not sure where their next meal is coming from. And I thought, this is crazy. In the richest country in the world, that we have such a deep hunger problem. My father's from India, and we think of hunger in all these other countries, but we don't necessarily think of them right in our own backyard. And Jade was eight months pregnant at the time with our son Sequoia, and we started talking, uh, say, you know, what are we gonna do to get involved? Uh, and we started talking to the Community Food Bank of Southern Arizona. There's Jade right there. That's my little boy. Uh, and uh, we started figuring out, how can my family get involved? How can we do something, even if it's something really small, that will start raising awareness about the hunger problem in America and maybe feeding some people? And we really didn't know where to get involved. And at the same time, we run a dance studio downtown, a dance and yoga studio called the Movement Shala. And people have been asking us to make a shirt. And so this happened. We came up with this tiny, tiny, little, simple, simple, simple idea all it was, was we'd finally make that community dance shirt and we'd feed 12 meals to people in this country through the food banks across the country every time someone bought one of those shirts. So what would we do? We'd just go on the internet, we'd get 30, 35 shirts, we'd put one rack in the window, she was still pregnant, and anybody in this room who's been pregnant, you know that you're probably not rushing to take on another project right at that time, right? It's a, you know, your, your mind's elsewhere. So we said, this has to be a really simple project, and, and so we literally said that, it'd be about... 30 shirts, 400 meals, and my family could put our heads down at night and say, we did something. But then we ran into the second problem, our country's addiction to fast fashion. Now, for those of you who know what, don't know what fast fashion is, it's where we get really inexpensive pieces of clothing, and we go through them really quickly, and that's all fine and good. We're really happy, right? So what's the greatest force shaping the world that we live in? It's you. And it's me. And it's what we choose to buy. It's where we choose to spend our dollars. It's, it's called voting with your dollars. Okay? Now people say to me, Alok, what does it matter if I change how I spend my dollars, right? Why, why should I be the one who starts making that change. I'm one person of billions. My choices are a drop in the bucket. They don't really matter, right? And most of us feel like our choices really don't matter. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're kind of like, eh, no big deal. And I see a couple people shaking their heads. Let me tell you something. They are absolutely thinking about you. They are thinking about every choice you want to make. There's people sitting around boardroom tables who are highly curious about what you want to buy. Not the person sitting next to you, but you. And it's called market share. It's not a rocket science idea. They'd like you to be buying what they're selling. So they're actively thinking about you. So here's the paradox. At the same time as you think your choices don't matter, they're thinking that your choices highly, highly, highly matter. So what happened in fashion? They started listening. Enough of us started saying, hey, I want that dress, but I only want to pay $14 for it. And oh, you see that really great little t-shirt? I want to spend $4 for it, right? 
So what did companies do? And, and, and you can see them right there. There they are. They're still smiling. And so they said, great. You want a dress for $14? No problem. Let's empty out the factory here with the labor cost this much. And we'll, well, we'll just, we'll look around, we'll scour the globe, and we'll find a place where we can lower that labor cost, right? And so I can start getting that dress for $14. And woohoo, $14 dress, right? $4 shirt. But to do that, oh, we got to use some heavy metal toxic chemicals, right? To, to make the colors stick on the shirts. So, oops, so that factory there, we better find a country with low worker protection and also low environmental standards because we're gonna have to dump that chemical stuff, right? And we're gonna dump it right into water. But no problem, you're gonna get that $14 dress or that $4 t-shirt. We just gotta do a little bit of this, right? But you, there they are. They're, they're still smiling because you still want that $14 dress, right? And that $4 shirt. We just, a little bit of water pollution, a little soil quality erosion. Uh, it's okay. They're, they're smiling because you're smiling with that $14 dress. And they're still listening to you. There they are again. And they heard you say, I want clothing that I can take right out of the dryer and put on with no wrinkles. Anybody ever heard of wrinkle-free clothing? Okay, I remember I was a teacher in my 20s. I could get wrinkle-free clothing. It meant I didn't have to do dry cleaning. I could save a few dollars. Being a teacher, I didn't earn that much. It was great. So they heard us say that we want wrinkle-free pants. So what did they do? They got their scientists and they started saying, hey, how can we make pants that don't have wrinkles when they come out of the dryer? Which is kind of a magic trick, if any of you know how fabric works. So what's that? That's a shark. What's that shark in? It's formaldehyde. Formaldehyde makes things stiffer, and in the case of this shark, it'll make the shark last a long, 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 long time. Well, what they figured out was if we put a little formaldehyde on the outside of your clothing, along with some other chemicals, they won't wrinkle. So we're all happy, right? No wrinkles. We're, we're really, really happy. Yeah, and then. That happened. Does anybody remember that? That's Bangladesh. That's 1,000 people in a garment factory crushed, right? Because they were in very unsafe working conditions, working very long hours, probably way more people in that building than should have been in that building. And there they are. Now, they're not smiling because people died, right? We, no one smiles when people die. This is that very uncomfortable smile when a PR disaster is occurring, right? Uh, do you still want that $14 dress? They're, they're wondering. Do you still want that $14 dress? Because if you still want that $14, this is a terrible thing, but if you want that $14 dress, we'll just make a factory maybe a couple blocks away. We'll find another 1,000 people, and you can still get that $14 dress or that $4 shirt. So what happens? Yay, we get this. We walk into a store and we see this. And what does it have? There we are, Woohoo! right? $4. And what is our gut reaction when we walk into a store where this only costs this? We say, I'm gonna take one in every color, right? Anybody ever done that? You know, wow, it's only $4. I can take a bunch of these suckers home, right? And they are really smiling because you just bought the whole stack and you've got that whole bag and we're walking out and man, we got a great deal on all that clothing. But what happens next? That. After a few months, the joy of all that, those shirts and everything, right? They're kind of now taking space in the closet. Maybe you do that spring cleaning, you get a bunch of pieces and you wrap them up and you think, I'm gonna head to Goodwill, right? I'm, I gotta clear some space out here. I'm gonna go to Goodwill and, and there they are. They're smiling still. Do you know why they're smiling? Because guess where you're going after Goodwill? You're going right back to their store and you're hoping there's that $4 shirt in a slightly different style, slightly different cut. 
and you're going to stock up again, right? And that's, that's what's been going on. And so what happened? This is one of our first designs at Fed by Threats. This is made out of burnout cotton. We got it on the internet. And they're really happy. Everybody was happy. We're feeding 12 meals to hungry Americans from every piece. And that's great. Except people started asking me really hard questions. They started saying, are you and Jade outsourcing jobs? Are you destroying the earth? And I have to tell you, that was a terrible proposition. All of a sudden, the idea that we were feeding meals to people in this country and trying to raise awareness about the hunger problem really didn't seem so sweet. It really didn't seem so amazing. So we either had to kill Fed by Threads right on the spot, or we started over. And any of you who have ever done projects, you probably know what I'm talking about. You sometimes run into a roadblock and you either start over or you turn around. In our case, we started over and we got on the hunt and people said, you're not going to find US tailors that are going to do what you're looking for. And then we did in California, North Carolina, Alabama, and soon to be Tucson. And our choices started supporting local jobs, supporting lo families, and the most important one there is the last one, which when a job is here in this country, if that's where you want there to be a strong economic growth, it probably stays here for the next generation. And many of you are college students, and you're going to graduate, and you're going to say, I want a job, right? I, I, most of you, I think, I hope a couple of heads are nodding. You're going to say, I want a job. We've got to create an economy and a set of ways that things are done so that there's jobs for the next generation. And that's where our choices come in. And then we shifted our fabrics. That purple sweatshirt you saw about three slides ago, that was burnout cotton. And it is really cute. But you know how you make it? You use chemicals, right? And you erode a little bit of the cotton. And, and it looks so cute. But we had to make a whole change. And we dove into the world of sustainable fabrics that didn't destroy the earth. And we started getting into low impact dyes and all sorts of other things, organic cotton. We even started making fabrics with recycled plastic bottles blended into organic cotton, right? That's crazy. It would have gone into a landfill or floated out into the Pacific Ocean. And instead, it didn't. And we started using hemp's and other fabrics. And then we got rid of animal products. And we didn't use any more animal products because, hey, people say, oh, what's the big deal? Just have a little bit of wool. You just got to shear the sheep. Well, no, that's not quite true. And I say to people, if you've got five minutes, I might ruin your day if you come to my store and we can talk about silk and wool and lots of other fabrics. We went further than that. We switched our hangers. We switched our mailers from Tyvek plastic to recycled uh, materials. And then you start to realize that people start changing your other choices too. You change what you might eat. You might change how you transport yourself. This is Bonnie. She won Cyclist of the Year. You might even change how you think about your relationship to animals. So it's not just about your choice about fashion. It starts extending into the rest of your life. We can either live with our eyes closed or not. And it's not just about supporting Fed by Threads. There's so many other companies out there that are taking hard choices, making big risks to do things differently. You can look at Too Strong USA, who hooked me up with these jeans this morning because my other, only other pair got a hole in them. They're amazing right here in Tucson. There's a movement afoot. Made in America is back. It's really cool. Sustainable fabrics are cool. Caring for animals is cool. I challenge you, next time you roll into a store where you normally shop, ask them, do you outsource jobs? Do you destroy the earth? Do you use formaldehyde, right? They're going to be uncomfortable when you ask them these questions. We aren't. I'm very comfortable with that. My co-founder came up with this phrase, where the change you want to see in the world. Thank you.